Yeah, very excited for uh, our team. Um, you know, I thought these guys uh, um, throughout the course of the year, this is 12 games we played, and I couldn't ask for anything more as a head coach the way they prepare. Uh, obviously, I had a little uh, situation pop up again this week, and when I was getting on that plane on Wednesday to, to, to fly to uh, Miami with my wife to, you know, do some things that uh, are personal, um, I, I was only comforted by the fact that I had uh, a group of coaches, a group of players um, that have really shown me that they know the process uh, weekly on what they need to do, how they need to do it. Um, I literally met with a team Tuesday morning, kind of did an introduction to Northwestern. Uh, we go through about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute film session. Uh, during that break is when I found out uh, that my father-in-law had passed and, and I never saw my team again until late last night and, and really just felt all week when I kept catching in with Ryan and Barry and Sean that these guys were locked into playing a really good game. Didn't worry, worry. I know obviously uh, Nebraska wins yesterday. Everybody starts talking about that and our guys just worried about playing this game. This was the seventh rematch game. Um, you know, a year ago we were a game shy of bowl eligibility. This year we're a game shy of uh, making it to Indy and, and uh, a lot of positive steps for our program uh, to play Northwestern, a uh, team that we'd lost to six straight times to play the way we did today and, and answer the bell. I, I couldn't be more excited about this team where we're at, but more importantly where we're going. So um, with that, uh, from an injury standpoint, Chase just didn't really want to put him back in there at the end. Um, you know, he's done a lot of really good things. Reggie's running well, sitting down, showed we really could put Sydney in there at tailback. Um, uh, but uh, I think he's going to be okay. I just didn't feel like it was um, uh, uh, something we want to press the envelope on uh, here at the end of that practice today. But otherwise, everybody came out of it pretty clean. But you you could have won with Sydney Brown today with the two picks. Two, yeah. Two touchdowns. Just talk about what he you know, Sid's uh, really, um, since I've come here, right, like he played good football, but he really hadn't played at the level that we saw him start playing at last year. And then, uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of their coaches before the game, and they're like, man, 30 is, 30 is a terror out there, right? Like it was before the game, and I'm like, yeah, he's a very, very exciting player to watch. Um, you know, when I talk to NFL teams, he does play down in the box well, but he plays high post safety and does some stuff in cover two. Um, he's incredible on special teams. Uh, you know, the good thing is today he, he did some good things for us to win the game, but he probably put on film again. Some things are going to make him some good money in the future. Brent, I know you have a lot of respect for Northwestern. Yeah. It's clearly been kind of a frustrating few weeks for you guys. Is this kind of a chance to let it out? In the last game? Yeah, you know, obviously you guys saw me last week after this game, after that game. I was I was just extremely frustrated with the situation. Uh, look, look, we played 12 games. We're 8-4, and four, eight games that we won. A couple of them probably, you know, could be a coin toss game, you know, depending on you look at Iowa, the game. But really that was – Probably the only one, right? And then we lost four games that were one-score games, and and I gotta that will motivate and galvanize whatever you want to say myself and the coaches during the out of season as much as anything. Just those four that got away from us. Um, but I thought this crew would play extremely pissed off this week. I really did. And then uh, just just their demeanor last night when I saw them, I got a bunch of hugs and and uh, you know some great things. Um, but I just I just knew of watching them last night and then seeing their their intensity today that they were going to play pretty well. Right. How are you holding up? You yeah, it's it's undescribable. Um, I appreciate all the thoughts, and, and I mean, I got so many well wishes. I can't get on top of my texts and my phones. Um, you know, I, I give credit to Northwestern. I said this to the TV crew last night. Um, uh, two weeks ago when I lost my mom, the first Big Ten coach I heard from was Fitz. Um, the other night when I lost my father-in-law, um, first Big Ten coach I heard from was Fitz. Um, so uh, a lot of respect for this place and what he's done, uh, does it the right way. But, um, you know, my wife uh, lost an incredible man in her life. Uh, he's an uh, awesome, awesome dude. But I hit the jot lotto in, in two categories, um, first in my wife. Um, but in my father-in-law, he and I became, from the first time I met him, uh, to where we are today, um, uh, I always said he's my favorite father-in-law, right? Uh, uh, my only one, obviously. Um, but uh, he and I did fishing trips. Um, you know, I, I even took him to Vegas. Like, who takes their father-in-law to Vegas, right? Um, I did. Um, and I still remember just seeing his smile on his face. Uh, I know today, it, actually, we went to his office uh, on Thursday and on his uh, yellow pad. I, some of the guys know this. I'm a yellow pad guy. I don't use white paper, I use yellow pads, and, and he had a yellow pad written down um, Saturday, 3.30, Big Ten Network, um, watch Brett. And uh, so that was on his list to do, so I think today he watched us. You think about uh, football's obviously your job, yeah. it's, it's a passion for all your time, <clears throat> but sometimes it can be just 
a respite to have a game to go to? Yeah, I, I, I knew last week. I kind of had a rough couple of days where I didn't know if I was going to be able to do this, but my wife was emphatic, and then when I saw that on on Greg's notepad that the, that the game was scheduled, I knew I was going to coach in this baby. Uh, I had to do some dynamics, uh, just getting everything arranged. I appreciate Josh and the athletic department and everybody and my coaches letting this all happen. But um, to be quite honest, uh, because of what we teach in our program, we teach a lot about football, but we kind of have some things walking in and walking out. I always tell our players, I need you to be at your best when it's at its worst, right? So that was my message to them last night, right? And when it was at its worst for me, uh, I need to be at my best for them. Uh, and on the flip side, they needed to pick me up, and, and obviously they did that tenfold. Right, you tend to see things before they happen a lot of the time. Did you see Reggie Love having this type of I, I didn't have any question about Reggie. Is So what Reggie does is very unique. Is Reggie plays with incredible low pad level. For a running back, he plays with really, really low pad level, and he keeps his legs going. So that's why you've seen him, I think, probably four or five times now where everybody thinks the play is down, and he just kind of comes out the backside. Uh, so he's a very talented player. He gave me a huge hug after that play. Like um, he and I have had some really, really good conversations and talks that aren't really anything to do with football since I've been around him. And I think when you when you experience little things like that with players, these football moments become that much more special. And and, and uh, I, I also give a lot of credit. You know, Chase Hayden didn't get any reps in there today, but uh, those those running backs during Chase is kind of on in there, out of there. Uh, have really done a great job during practice, and I knew we'd be able to have a success today. And you mentioned, you know, the win yesterday. Did you have anybody keeping tabs on? No. Um, uh, my chief of staff, Mark Torsani, he's been with me the whole time since I've been at Wisconsin. He and I, he knew that I wouldn't really uh, want to know or ask or anything. I knew uh, somebody came up to me at half and said what the score was, right? And then I didn't even mention it again until like, there was like a minute left or two minutes. I said, what's the score to Indy? And that's when... Uh, Kevin Kane upstairs said, ah, not good, uh, and, and went from there. But, you know, I, I just I think you got to take positives from negatives, and obviously there's four games there that we really, uh, in my opinion, could have been on the other end of, right? And if we just had any one of those uh, those four, you know, two of those four, it's a no-brainer, right? So um, I'm excited as hell because I think we're only scratching the surface of what we can be. Uh, I knew we needed to get bowl eligible this year to keep moving in the, in the right direction, and uh, I really want to just play Michigan or Ohio State, right? I just wanted one more chance. Uh, to play against a Big Ten opponent, that's that's probably what I wanted to do more than anything. Right, what does this season tell your program internally? Well, recruiting wise, right? Like you know, I know you guys follow, right? Um, we're, we're we're being it. We, we can go toe to toe now. I think with a lot of really good players, right? Um, you know, I saw there last week we were playing at Michigan, and there was a safety that plays for them as a true freshman, and there's a a linebacker from the state of Illinois that plays for them that that I think if that had happened this year, we might be able to get those guys. Uh, but a year ago, there was just a talk of what we could be. There wasn't the reality of what we can be. So I think now we put on paper that we can play with anybody in the conference. Um, you know, I know that uh, uh, some of those guys were at the Michigan game, and I kind of told them after the game, I said, listen, um, you know, uh, the next time we come up there, it's probably not going to be um, uh, under the same um, um, players, right? But I think the, the results can be changed in a, in a heartbeat. Uh, if we just keep recruiting the way we have to, uh, getting our players developed the way we have to, uh, and see these things continue to grow. The guys kind of just going to the Indian shadow at the end. I mean, to get that close and then a field goal. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think they even crossed anybody's mind. Yeah, uh, I think we'll take a 40, 40, whatever, 41 3. 41 3. 3. Yeah, I think we'll take that one all day. Brett, what conversations do you have with players who are big Great question. The yeah, so I really, uh, you know, for really since our second bye week, uh, I uh, have had a lot of conversations myself, Pat Hamilton, Jay Kaiser, uh, because kids have started, you know, last week I think 700 kids got in the portal, so we kind of have projections. But uh, tomorrow I think everybody just kind of take a day to breathe. Uh, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday I'll probably have a lot of conversations with guys that, you know, exploring NFL opportunities, uh, uh, guys that, uh, you know, um, you know, maybe exploring uh, opportunities that, you know, guys with two or three years of eligibility that, that because of COVID rules, it's just a whole different wild, wild west. Um, there's obviously new NIL rules. Uh, there's a lot of different things. Fortunately, uh, in the NIL world, really to retain players is still, you know, something that's a pretty new concept for people, but uh, it's it's something we're working through on a daily basis. Uh, it's really going to be a unique week this week in preparation because we can't, uh, we'll take, I told them, uh, they get all tomorrow off and all Monday, but we'll work our guys Tuesday. We'll come in and watch the film. Uh, our, our travel roster will lift Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, we'll work. We're actually going to practice our Devo guys Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So those guys will get a, a, a bunch of reps that um, allows us to do this by bowl eligibility thing. So this is this is a really fun time. This is probably one of my more enjoyable times of the year. 
Well, they were playing a little. I didn't like the personal fouls we got today, right? There's a couple on the sideline. But um, I think they take on the demeanor of their coaches. Our coaches are very intense people, um, good kids, uh, just like I get good coaches that, that like to play the game the right way. Um, uh, I, I, I think a lot about, like, what do teams look like after we play them, right? And, and uh, I know the way we play is a physical type of game, and I think offensively we'll have a huge jump next year, just I think Barry in the system, and um, obviously with the players that we got returning, um, I think we can make a huge jump. And then defensively we have some players to replace uh, through through roster development on our roster right now, but probably also through the transfer portal. And, uh, you know, for instance, like at safety, where we're going to lose some key players uh, there are four safeties that before we got here really hadn't done much in college football. Uh, Kirby Joseph drafted last year is now one of the best players, impact players in the league. And then you got three DBs uh, with with Quan Spoon and, and uh, um, um, uh, Sid that are are playing at the highest level of their positions. Right? Like, I mean, it's it shows what we've been able to do. That didn't happen by chance. Those guys have been developed. They've been put in a scheme, and they're very productive. Uh, Dave, when, the one unbeaten thing on Michigan, one, when unbeaten Michigan and Ohio State play, it just kind of underscores. The argument that there's a, the, the divisions are lopsided after going through the division the whole season yeah. and, and seeing it from more toward the top than you did last year. What's the difference between the two? How far away is the West? You know, um, so I was back in the conference when there used to be the leaders of legend, and I was uh, actually a unique perspective. I was uh, the last coach that won the Big Ten title without a championship game. Um, and I remember, you know, at some point early in my career, I was with Coach Alvarez and uh, talked about you know like hey we got a you know Ohio State and and he goes you want to win a championship and I said yeah and he goes we got to beat them right and and we beat Ohio State that year and they were number one in the country and and uh, we knocked them off next week we beat a top five Iowa team uh, and then we closed it out with four regular season wins and we won our first Big Ten championship uh, and then the next two years uh, it was in division or it was in divisional play leaders and legends and and uh, we won our uh, two championship games had a rematch game against Penn, uh, Michigan State and then we had a rematch game against uh, um, uh, Nebraska, and we won both of those. Like, if you want to win championships, just win. Like, that's what it is. Um, who knows with these new two coaches or these new teams coming into our conference, but I love the Big Ten Conference. I'm obviously a huge fan of it. That's why one of the most exciting parts coming back to it. But um, however they, they lay it out, we'll just we'll line up and we'll play the rules, play by the rules, play the, play the schedule they give us and see what happens. What's the feeling like for you as a head coach when you know two straight weeks you've been missing for practice and you have a staff that can handle this? And Without a team, without a leader, and then function. Well, I'm glad it happened at the end of the year, not at the beginning of the year, right? And 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 today's communication, we we do a lot of things, but really, uh, Ryan and Barry, uh, Barry's been with me for five years prior to here, right? And Ryan's been with me now into year two. Um, part of the thing that I gave them when I hired them was like, I'm going to make you as good as I possibly can for when your opportunity comes to the head coach, you're ready to roll, right? And uh, I really handled off, uh, handed off a lot of that stuff to Ryan this week. He did my Thursday travel meeting um, and knocked it out of the park from what I was told uh, by the people in there. Uh, I knew game plan wise, really by Tuesday morning, when we met and, and, and had all day Monday, I kind of knew where we were going, right? But uh, the pulse of the team really handled is handled by the coaches, their leadership, and yeah, I, could, I couldn't be more excited about where we're at.